Hello, Tony Kachanel with OC, Nabono Nifopa, Tunia, Tutua, Westminster Abbey, Ako Mahigan, Chico Parliament, Tanunga, Tunia, South Asia Solidarity Group, Makai Nanuya, protest Bolditiwa, a protest to protest against the effects on democracy in India. Chuchu ke ho unau ho zong unau welfare yu ke ho hai mi um ho a zau thai thai zau di kati o gen gen. Nying ko ma zong su e pi ham e ho mei thai te in e ho is e pi ham nu mei ho rev a bol chung tu ba cho. Pichi a zong su am a hit am ho a ding mong mong a cho protest hat organize a hin bol o hi a na. Cho tu chung a zong hi india a ding a protest hat bol di a ti kilo ba cho a cho ke ho zong zau thai chan am ho zong hi. So Asia Solidarity Group itu dia hein, eh, hoi, kata eh, na support wah hein, na, tu cuma hein, kau hoi zong kau gazau kiri bunuh hein, so kau kiman cakap, kau cuma cakap tempat kan boleh kita hein, tu hein kau katun ta, cilai dia, cukup perlemian dia, kau boleh dia untuk cilang kau, cilang kau hein lah dia, kau station aku mana lah ya, kalau dia kau ngan lah, tu cilai tu ni hoi cuma tak mai teh tu hein, kau boleh dia umun cek cek kau zuk dia buat mana lah. Jadi, ukim tu, Ruben dia anak tu ke hotel yang kita suruh tu tak? Ruben, 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 saya. Ke hotel yang kita suruh tu na, na Ubin, Una, aku na, ada yang cik hoi hong nai lo. Jual ayam hoi grup hoi kau hitai, so lah hitai zau dia. Down, down, BJP. Down, down, BJP. Down, down, BJP. Down, down, RSS. Down, down, RSS. Down, down, RSS. Down, down. BJP, down down. BJP, down down. Modi Shah, down down. Modi Shah, down down. That's a JP. That's a JP. Modi Shah, down down. Modi Shah, down down. BJP, down down. BJP, down down. BJP, down down. RSS, down down. RSS, down down. RSS, down down. RSS, down down. नहीं चलेगी, नहीं चलेगी। काला शाही नहीं चलेगी। काला शाली नहीं चलेगी। नहीं चलेगी, नहीं चलेगी। काला शाही नहीं चलेगी। नहीं चलेगी, नहीं चलेगी। मुर्दाबाद, 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 मुर्दाबाद। बोधी शाह, बोधी शाह। One hundred and seventy six confirmed that two hundred and fifty plus settlements bond. Over 4,000 houses burned, 360 plus churches burned, over 40, 45,000 persons internally displaced. The figures I just read out pertain to the suffering of the Kukizo Christian community of Manipur, a naughty state in India. 53 of our death remained unclaimed and unattended for over seven months. They were stuck in hospital morgues located in Imphal, the capital of Manipur. My aunt goes of whom 58 years, and my cousin, her son, Golan Sang, 28, were among them. Retrieval of their remains were only made possible with the intervention of the Indian Army. May their souls rest in peace. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Lun from Una Welfare UK and International. My big thank you to Amrit, and South Asia Solidarity Group for this platform to share with you my family's story and to bring to your attention the grievous human rights violation committed against my community and the urgent need for intervention. After taking emergency shelter at a relative's house, 
in Langol Imphal on the night of May 3, 2023. The next morning, seven members of my family, including my aunt, Gozabu, her daughter, Zhang Lai Kim, who is 24, her son, Dolal Sang, and his young bride, Nancy Ting Tian Yang, who is 28 years old, were on their way to take refuge at a nearby CRPF camp. CRPF is short for Central Reserve Police Force in Lamphel, Imphal. A mob of over 200 blocked their path and pulled them out of the car. They paraded them and made them sit on a culvert and they, they were subjected to insults and questions about their identity and their ethnicity before the mob separated them. My cousin, Golal Sa, was chased, encircled and subjected to brutal assault with rods, stones and bricks. My aunt, his mum, positioned herself between the attackers and him while the mob cheered and carried on until both of them were brutally hacked to death in broad daylight. Nancy, my sister-in-law, was paraded to a different place where the women folk shouted to the others to rape her. She was left to die with severe head injuries and fractured wrists and fingers, but miraculously survived to tell her ordeal. Hamson, my one-year-old nephew, who was in the arm of another aunt, was not spared either. He was hit several times. His parents tell me he still wakes up in the middle of the night, screaming and shaking. The same day, in another part of Imphal, Olivia Tongloy, 21 years, and Florence Hang Sing, 24, who worked at the car wash, were locked in a room by a mob. Young men entered the room and tortured them. News reports said co-workers could hear their screams and pleas for over two hours. When the room was open, it was filled with the blood and hair of the victims. The naked parade of the two cookies of women, which shocked the nation and the entire world, also happened on the same day, May 4. Nengholun, the 19-year-old younger brother of one of the women, was killed trying to protect her. And her father was murdered in front of her eyes. There are many, many more we can talk about, but we don't have time today. None of those and the unspoken, there has been no justice, no arrest have been made as far as we know so far. Since May 3, 2023, my state, Manipur, has been reeling under what we believe to be state-sponsored ethnic cleansing of the Kuki Zou community. Today marks the 367th day of the conflict. Unprecedented levels of lawlessness and violence continue as I speak. There is now a clear physical and emotional divide between communities that have lived together for centuries. A report by the uh, team of the Caravan of Love in July 2023 observed, there is no evidence of any process initiated by the government, whether it's local or national, to rehabilitate the displaced communities and, and particularly to create conditions to bring the estranged communities together again. I have a, a link in case anyone is interested after our speech. I hope you join us as we speak out against human rights violations and make a stand for truth accountability and justice. This will pave the way for talks and an end to violence, and this will lead to a much needed return to peace in Manipur. In addition to lives lost, over 50 internally displaced persons have succumbed to diseases due to malnutrition and lack of medical assistance or simple essential medicine. Sandeep Chakraborty, a journalist with NewsClick on 26th of December 2023 stated, living conditions are dismal with shortage of food medicines and other essentials. I also have the link to this report if you need it. In the hill areas of Manipur itself, more than 150 temporary relief camps using schools, church halls, and other public buildings are set up to replace our displaced people. These camps are either run by local civil society organizations, NGOs, churches, crowdfunding, or support from philanthropic individuals and neighboring states, including Mizoram, with minimal support from the Manipur state government. We are in immediate need of adequate shelter, water, basic food, primary vaccinations for children and adolescents, maternal health care and other medical care. We also have long-term needs, and these are to name a few, the provision of services for psychosocial development of children and adolescents, trauma care and counseling for the victims and displaced families, education for school-aged population, occupational arrangements for working-age population, and rebuilding of basic infrastructure.
We urgently request your involvement and collaboration to provide for our immediate and long-term needs. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Sharon. I'm also from UNO uh, Welfare UK and International. Thank you, Amrit, and everyone for giving us uh, opportunity in this platform. I'm not going to repeat what uh, Lun has already said, but for in context, um, I just want to say that our cookies or community, we are a minority uh, group in the state of Manipur. We are, um, we are Christians uh, by faith. Uh, majority of us and it's in that context I want to share with you some uh, some information um, and this is not just related to Manipur it is relevant to the whole of India as well so I'm basing my information on Open Doors UK and Ireland uh, they are one of the organization that uh, looks at a number of things that minorities or worldwide would face and particularly uh, Christian communities according to Open Doors UK and Ireland since 2014 India has advanced from number 28 on the world watch list to 11 on the most current list. This shows how the Christian minorities in India have been facing persecution, discrimination and opposition. And I just want to say here, although I am focusing on Christian, I think the same uh, discrimination, opposition and persecution applies to all minorities in India. There have been statements of hatred and threats against Christians, pastors, leaders, lay Christians have been attacked and killed brutally, openly without repercussions for the accused. Pastors are falsely accused of forced conversions, made to sign false confessions. Complaints are lodged against them. They are arrested, imprisoned, and often enmeshed in prolonged legal battles. There are attacks on church gatherings, forced closures, social ostracizations, physical and mental abuse. And this is seen all over India. Open Doors also report that in 2023, there were over 2,300 incidents using anti-conversion law. So in the state of Manipur, as you all know and might have read and heard, from the 3rd of May, there has been ongoing conflict, which is still actively ongoing. There is still active persecution towards my community. On the 3rd of May, 2023, at 4 p.m., exactly 367 days ago, a cookie pastor, Seiko Hau Kipgen, was beaten to death by major militants. He was the first victim. And this was a clear indication of how the aggressors targeted a man based on his identity of being a Christian who belonged to the minority community. Until date, we know there are over 300 churches and synagogues belonging to the Kukizo community that have been destroyed, either burnt or demolished. And more recently, many videos have surfaced of evidences of desecrations and destruction of worship places. Videos also surfaced of blasphemy towards Christian beliefs and practice. An example which was widely shared uh, recently showed events at Kopibong Catholic Church where Meithe aggressors were conducting a mock Christian, ma Christian ma marriage. So, friends, what I want to share, the message is that we are in the throes of the largest democratic republic free-falling into a deep chasm of hatred and violence towards its own people on the basis of narrow sectarian values. We need to guard against this, and I hope that all of you and all people across religious and political divide will unite, will stand up, we speak up and act against the spread of the message of hatred and violence in the communities across India. Thank you. I guess, can I just add my our voice to the heartfelt uh, feelings that we all have with atrocities and massacres that have occurred in Manipur and uh, be sure that we stand in solidarity to make sure that uh, you can air and come forward and tell your problems and issues to the world and we stand in solidarity with you thank you for expressing your thoughts and feelings today and we that's really really appreciated thank you so we're going to try to get ready no more no more no more stop killing christian in Manipur. no more no more no more stop killing christian in Manipur. no more no more no more 
ฉลองอาคมหงกิจายเจมนาเฮียเกเฮียจะปังเกเฮียกะดาราเซียเฮกะอมซอดเฮยลอดิเซียเฮกะเจกุตายฉลายฮูบิลดิงกลาสบิล